Hello there, thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and boy, here you have the top guy in his genre, right? The king of swing himself, Benny Goodman, master of the clarinet, right at the peak of the swing era, right about 1940 is my best guess on this concert poster. And you know, this is a very typical big band poster in touring window cards that, uh, you know, most of us have seen. Uh, of the era from about the mid-1930s to mid-1940s. It's roughly 14 by 22 inches. It's made of cardboard and it's got a management logo on there. Again, this is typical of all, you know, whether it's Glenn Miller or the Dorseys or whatever. It's just very, um, it's very common to see these things. You've got the management logo on there. You've got a big picture of the artist or a artistic rendering of the musician. Um, you've got a slogan, which is, you know, pretty key for these big band posters. There always seems to be something on there, in this case, the King of Swing. Some kind of action element is usually packed in. You can see the lines coming out of, um, Benny's clarinet there is the action element, and uh, his name, the artist's name, usually in very big letters, and then of course always, and his orchestra, that's always present, and finally, no printer's credit or union bug. All those traits very characteristic of these big band, you know, World War II concert posters. And of course, not to mention the blank space above, sometimes below, but almost, you know, usually above. And that, of course, is what makes a tour blank. They would just print in the differ different information show to show up there in the top. Now, speaking of that darn information, this is one of those very rare cases where they didn't put in the day of the week. You know, instead of Tuesday, February 3rd or whatever, it just says February 3rd. In fact, as you can see, not to gloss over, Winter Carnival Ball, Schenectady Armory in Schenectady, New York, February 3rd, 9 to 1.30, a dollar ten per person. We love that dollar admission, and directed by Jack Reef Productions. So you know, without a day of the week, you've got to kind of follow other clues to try to figure out when this is from. And the best clue by far is to have a similar poster, which I definitely have, not on hand, but a photograph of one. And this is, as you can see, uh, get the glare off of there, Benny Goodman concert poster with very much the same template and format. And this one, indeed is exactly from 1940 from Johnson City, New York. And instead of red, white, and blue like the poster, this is black and orange. So, you know, these are just two weeks apart, these two posters. So you might say, well, wait a minute, you know, different color scheme, could they really be just two weeks apart? Or does the color difference mean that this is actually from another year, like 39 or 41? And I would say, yes, I agree with you. It's it's more likely this is not from 1940 than another year, but in which direction and how many years is anybody's guess? I mean, 38 to 42 is probably a pretty accurate guess. So I'm just splitting the difference, going right down the middle, and because I have a picture of it from 40, I'm just calling this a 1940 concert poster for now. You know, it's interesting, I do do a lot of poster blogs and everything, big collector and all that stuff, so I'm always dealing with everybody from this to Jimi Hendrix and stuff. But if you had just this poster, right, and some time, you could dig pretty deep and probably find out for sure what year it's from. I mean, just use your imagination for a second. You could look up the history of the venue. You could perhaps go to the library's microfilm if you were in the area or knew somebody who was. You could further research Jack Reef Productions, you know, in Schenectady, New York, and find out when he performed and everything. And perhaps, you know, you'd be able to really nail down the year. Um, I did a little bit of that, by the way, but just don't have time with so many poster blogs to go too deep on one poster. But, you know, interestingly, if this was 1940, just hitting the charts at this moment was Darn That Dream by Benny Goodman, sung by Mildred Bailey and taken from a Broadway musical and had Fletcher Henderson on piano. That would be his 104th charting record. Did I just say that? 104th charting record for Benny Goodman here, again, if it is from February of 1940, and his 12th number one record, Darn That Dream. Now, to take things to a little bit of a crazy extreme, because that's what I do sometimes, <laughs> in fact, I'm not going to go there, how's that? I just had to suggest it, though, that let's say this was from 39 or 41, and we know it's from February 3rd. If it's from the year on either side of my guess, 1940, I could say in both cases that his very next single would not only go to number one, but be there for a month. In both cases, <laughs> I didn't even go to 38 and 42, didn't want to look any further. But anyway, you know, sometimes you have to be satisfied with not knowing the exact year, but you certainly know the era, 
and we all know the music. Big band swing music, the soundtrack to World War II. Just gotta love it. Benny Goodman today. Thanks a lot for dropping by, and uh, I appreciate your time. We'll see you next time for something soon. Bye-bye.